United States President Donald Trump does not raise the issue of human rights violations with Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte during their bilateral meeting Monday. Past midnight Sunday, Duterte said he was sure Trump wouldn't raise the issue of extrajudicial killings during their meeting. But presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said it was Duterte himself who introduced his controversial war on drugs as a topic of conversation. Roque says, quote, It was President Duterte who brought up with President Trump the drug menace in the Philippines, and the U.S. president appeared sympathetic and did not have any official position on the matter, but was merely nodding his head. Trump also assures the Philippine president he had always been a friend of the Duterte administration. Uh, we've had a great relationship. This has been uh, very successful. When an American reporter tried to ask Trump if he would bring up human rights violations during the meeting, Duterte cut in to say they won't be taking questions. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations and China, in a draft statement, vow not to take the commerce situation in the South China Sea for granted. The two parties say it is important that we cooperate to maintain peace, stability, freedom of navigation in and over flight above the South China Sea in accordance with international law. They add they will avoid miscalculations that could lead to escalation of tensions. ASEAN member states also agreed to officially commence negotiations with China on the long-delayed code of conduct in the disputed waters. Before the Duterte administration, the COC was expected to be a legally binding document, but now the Philippines is wary of having a legally binding COC. Philippine Foreign Secretary Alan Cayetano earlier said he prefers the COC to be a non-legally binding gentleman's agreement. The draft statement also slams North Korea for violating United Nations Security Council resolutions by launching missile tests. The statement says, quote, We expressed grave concern over the DPRK's ongoing development of weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear and chemical weapons and ballistic missile technologies, which are in contravention of UNSC resolutions. The ASEAN urges North Korea to fully and immediately comply with its obligations arising from all the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. The Food and Drug Administration certifies contraceptive implant brands Implanon and Implanon NXT as non-abortifacients. This means the contraceptives do not cause abortion. The FDA on Sunday releases the results of its recertification process of all 51 contraceptives covered by the two-year-old temporary restraining order issued by the Supreme Court against the reproductive health law. The resolution of the FDA signals the imminent lifting of the TRO. While the TRO was only imposed on the implant and implants, the 2015 SE ruling also included a clause banning the FDA from granting any and all pending application for reproductive products and supplies, including contraceptive drugs and devices. The Commission on Population earlier warned that if the TRO would not be lifted soon, 90% of contraceptives would disappear from the market. United States President Donald Trump vows continued partnership with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations amid his America First policy. Trump says this diplomatic partnership advances the prosperity and security of the American people and the people of all Indo-Pacific nations. He says, quote, I am here to advance peace, to promote security, and to work with you to truly achieve an open Indo-Pacific where we are proud and we have sovereign nations and we thrive and everybody wants to prosper. Trump then diverts from his prepared speech to promote the United States' achievements since he became president. Trump says, quote, As the world knows the United States, since our election on November 8, has been moving ahead really brilliantly on an economic basis. He says America's achievements mean only good things for the region. Trump says, quote, We think that bodes very well for your region because of the partnership that we have. So we want our partners in the region to be strong, independent, and prosperous. At least 200 people are killed and hundreds more injured when a 7.3 magnitude earthquake shook the mountainous Iran-Iraq border Monday. 
Iran gives a provisional toll of more than 200 dead, while only six were reported killed on the Iraq side of the border. The quake hits 30 kilometers southwest of Halabja in Iraqi Kurdistan. Iraqi authorities say rescue teams are having a difficult time reaching the victims because roads have been cut off by landslides. The quake, which struck at a relatively shallow depth of 25 kilometers, is felt for about 20 seconds in Baghdad and for longer in other provinces of Iraq. On the Iranian side of the border, the tremor shakes several cities in the west of the country, including Tabriz. Follow Rappler.com for continuing updates.